Hello, girls. Good morning. Okay, now today we are going to study about absorption in the small intestines. Okay, we have earlier seen the process of digestion, and you've seen that digestion actually uh, completes at uh, ileum. Okay, so at the end of ileum, you should have all the complex uh, food, uh, meaning the complex molecules, meaning carbohydrates. Uh, protein and lipids being broken down into simplest form which will be able to be absorbed into the uh, blood and ultimately through the membrane of the cells so that the cells can get the nutrients okay now when I was marking your assignments the other day I just found out that you had a misconception about the word digestion I have also explained that in your whatsapp okay so digestion actually means breaking down of the food into smaller units so that they can be easily uh, absorbed into the body cells. Now, digestion does not include absorption. So, absorption is a separate uh, process or a separate concept altogether. And neither does it include de defecation. So, here I would like to uh, stress that absorption is purely the nutrients after being broken into the smallest unit or the smallest form, being absorbed into the blood or into the lacteal to be passed on to, uh, to all the body cells in our body okay, for the nutrient and for the assimilation and for the use of it. So I hope this you get it clear. Okay, now let's talk about absorption. Okay, usually the questions that they ask in this uh, about absorption is about what are the adaptations. Adaptations are the special features which allow the process to be carried out well, carried out efficiently. So adaptations is a very common uh, question that they always get in the essay or in the structure. Okay, so now if you want to talk about, if the question asks for adaptation of small intestine, adaptation of small intestine means it refers to the entire length of the intestines. So if you ask for the question, the question is asking for adaptation of small intestines, you must be talking, you can, there are six points you can talk about, okay, which I've labeled here. One, two, three, four, five, and also the microvillus is point number six. So you have to read carefully whether they're asking for adaptation of small intestines or is the question asking for adaptations of villus, okay? Now, if adaptation of villus, you can only talk about point number 3, 4, 5, and 6. You understand what I mean? All right, because villus is just the small little unit that you see here. This is villus. But if you talk about small intestine, it, it includes the entire length of it. And then for small intestine, the adaptation of one, you can talk about the villus itself and also that the ileum is highly folded and is also long. Okay, so let's go to each point one by one. Okay, let's say the question asks for adaptations of small intestine. You have six points here you can talk about. Number one, the villus, uh, sorry, the ileum is long. Okay, so if it's long, so why is it an adaptation? Why is it good for the absorption? So if it's long, that means there's a high chance of a lot of nutrients being totally absorbed. It means completely absorbed into the bloodstream and into the lacteal. Okay, that means the chances of it being uh, escaped being uh, means not being uh, absorbed will be less. So having a long ileum is good because all the nutrients will get to pass through the entire system and there is very little chance for it to be missed out from being absorbed. Okay, so that means that is the keyword here is long. Okay, the second keyword that you talk about is it's highly folded highly folded and it's also covered with tiny projections called the villi. So villi is a plural. This is the, uh, what do you call the projections here, right? This one, this one, these projections here are the villi. Villi is plural. So if you say singular, you call it as villus. Okay. So the second point is you must say that it's highly folded and it's covered by tiny projections called villi. So that will increase the surface area. That's the adapt adaptation. Okay, the third point for adaptation of small intestine. I'm just talking about small intestine now. Huh? You can also talk about number three. Talk about the adaptation in the villus itself. So the villus itself has got these kind of adaptations. Number one, it is the epithelial layer is one cell thick. So that means if I max uh, here, I'm talking about here now. Ah, uh, This is the epithelial layer. 
and you can see very clearly it is one cell thick. So one cell thick basically it means thin. It basically means thin. Okay, in other words, you're just saying it's thin. So the thick, if we want to say the word thick, you must say one cell thick. One cell thick means thin. So how does it help? It helps to increase the rate of diffusion or absorption, absorption into the blood, uh, the blood capillary and also the lacteal. So it helps in to accelerate means make it faster, nutrient absorption. Okay, number four, you have goblet cells. Okay, goblet cells are the cells here. It could be any of these epithelial cells. Okay, look at the picture here. That means these goblet cells are actually being uh, specialized to produce mucus. They are epithelial cells. But it is more specialized. It has already been it undergo a bit of differentiation to produce uh, mucus. So it aids digestion and also aids absorption uh, right, to uh, smoothen the, 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 the intestines. Okay. Number five, there is a rich network of blood capillaries inside the villus itself. So here you can see the bloodstream or the blood blood. All right, the blue and the red one just shows that the red one is coming in from the heart and then uh, the blue one shows it's going back to the heart. Okay, so it's uh, oxygenated and uh, after, after picking up nutrients, it's going to go back to the heart. So the fifth point is you talk about the blood capillaries and also you talk about the lacteal. Lacteal also helps but lacteal will absorb other substances. Later we see what are the substances. So this is a large network of blood capillaries and also lacteal. How to absorb that. Okay, then after that you also see you have the intestinal juices, the intestinal glands, UH food intestinal juices that will produce the enzyme. This is for digestion. So if you have absorption, you don't need to talk about this. Okay, because this is for digestion. So if you are answering question for absorption, you don't need to talk about this. Uh, digestion the process. Okay, check up Okay, now point number six. Yeah, on the epithelial uh, cell of this villus itself, if you maximize, if you amplify it or fang da, magnify it, you will see that epithelial cell itself got projection some more. Ha ha yo xiao xiao the projection, and these projections are called microvillus. So this microvillus also further increase the surface area and that also to increase the absorption rate okay so here you will have six points to talk about if you want to discuss about the adaptation of small intestines but if you want if the question wants you to talk about the adaptations of ileum or adaptations of the so not ileum adaptations of the villus you only can talk about number Three, four, five, and six. Okay, I hope I, I get you, you you get this clear. Okay, lastly, now let's look at what kind of food goes in through what channels. Just now I mentioned there are two uh, pathways. Okay, one is the blood capillaries, another one is the lacteal. So you see that different substances will enter into different pathways. So for glucose, all right, amino acids, galactose. Fructose, all these are water soluble substances. So, for water soluble substances, they will enter through the blood capillaries. And then for the other group, which is not water soluble, that means it's fat, uh, lipid soluble, like fatty acids, glycerol, uh, lipid droplets, or vitamin A, D, E, K. Okay, now, which is the lacteal. So, the lacteal is the one, the green color here in the middle here. Okay, and then once it enters, it's going to join back into the lymphatic system. And that one, you will learn that later in another chapter. Alright, so you need to remember what goes into your blood capillaries and what goes into your lacteal. Water soluble, it will go to blood capillaries, including vitamin B and C. Okay, vitamin A, D, E, K, oil soluble or fat soluble, that's called the lacteal. Okay, and then the methods of absorption. Okay, so fructose, glucose, galactose, which is lipid soluble, all these enter through the blood capillaries. The methods would be active transport, facilitated diffusion. Okay, they use that protein, carrier protein, absorption with water and osmosis. 
那个全部都是啊，就是 all the methods besides simple diffusion。For the fat soluble ones like fatty acid and glycerol and also the vitamin A, D, E, K, they go into the lacteal and they go through the cell through simple diffusion. Okay, go through the uh through the lacteal through simple diffusion. Okay, and this is uh all the facts that you need for the moment. And don't forget to look at this video. This shows you a very good picture of. How it looks like inside your small intestine. So for those who are you are very queasy, then you find it very what that nah. All right, make sure you 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 just uh make you eat first before you go and have a look lah. All right, or you don't eat too full lah. You may feel a bit you know nauseated by it. But it really shows you the folded the villus inside there. All right, okay. So I hope you have a um good understanding of today's lesson. Any questions I don't understand, please ask me.